Welcome back to Nomad in Gameland. This week I played Solstice and I enjoyed it. I'm tired. It requires stamina, but I enjoyed it. Combat is solid, story is decent, but the game is far too long. Far, far too long. And this is my review, so stick around if you want to hear the opinion of a random guy on YouTube. Let's start with the story. I really enjoyed the story in Solstice. And the game tries to make it boring for some reason. They give you a three minute long intro, which is far too long, but it does explain a lot. So what I've done is I've chopped it up, I've sped it up, and I'm just gonna play it for you. I've shrank it down to about a minute and a half. So watch it and it'll give you the premise and I'll be right back. In the beginning, the world was subjugated by chaos. Then the Keepers came to be Tor de Bera, Shaper, and Dutch. The three fought the spawn of chaos, and ultimately they prevailed. Chaos could be banished, but it could not be destroyed. So the Keepers weaved a veil with their own essence and stood guard. The world was now safe, but it was also empty and meaningless. Thus, the Keepers reached beyond the veil. They seized the power of chaos itself. They gave it shape and purpose. They created life, and man was their most perfect creation. But all life would eventually hear the call from beyond the veil. Thus it happened that, alongside life, death also came to the world. The great cycle was set in motion, yet chaos hungered for more and sought to undo the Keepers' creation. The spawn of chaos struck, wounding the Keepers and tearing the veil. Endless droves of horrors trespassed into the world. And so came the solstice of souls. Hurt and weak, the Keepers charged man with defending the world. They inspired man to fight fire with fire, ferocity with ferocity. Driven by the infinite wisdom of the Keepers, man turned the very power of chaos against it. Through sacrifice and resolve, a breed of sacred warriors was created. Three were wounds in the essence of the Keepers. Three the mighty battles fought and won by the champions of man. Three the sacred cities that were built in those hallowed places. Eventually, the solstice of souls was put to an end. The three cities still stand to this day for the glory of the Keepers, while the memory of the sacred warriors has been lost to time. But while the mortal body must perish, that which is immortal is bound to be reborn. So there you go, that was the intro. At the end of it, the lady jumps through the window and you enter this big purple fight, which looks fantastic. It's not a tutorial, I was just clicking away, it doesn't explain how to fight or anything. And at the end of it, it basically says 24 hours earlier and then jumps you back to the day before. I hate how they do this as a plot device, but hey ho, that's what it is. And there's a couple of ways to try to progress the story. Either through the cutscenes, or you can ask the guy who sells you stuff, or they have these whole dream levels which are set on this lake, which is fantastic looking as well. And it is an interesting story. So basically, there's a tear in the veil, and these chimeras have to go and fix it. So you've got these two sisters, Briar and Lou, who are a chimera themselves, and they're planning to join two others who arrived earlier. Obviously, things go wrong, and you are there to piece together the story of this tear. You can get some of the background from this observer, and you go through dream sequences to piece together what's happened in the past. I thought the story, the lore, the whole universe was really interesting. I just wish there was some more of it. The characters are all really likeable, interesting. Except for Briar, she comes off as trying a bit too hard. Loot, the younger sister, she comes off a bit creepy at the beginning, but she is much more likeable than her sister. The story itself is not that original. In fact, it reminded me a lot of Dragon Age. So obviously you have the things like a tear in the veil, which is very similar to the premise in Dragon Age Inquisition, but also the things like Grey Wardens, where they have this power against Darkspawn and they also succumb to craziness. That all sounds very similar to the Chimeras in this game. Even if they've taken inspiration from other places, the story here is still really well told and really interesting. But let's move on, let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay in Solstice is a mixed bag. There's solid combat, but the rest of the game is, is kind of boring. And it's all dragged down by poor pacing. But let's start with the combat. Combat is fun and there's a lot of depth. It does take a while to learn, but once you've got it, it's incredibly satisfying. So there are a lot of moving parts. So you're fighting with two sisters, but you only have control of the older sister, Briar. The younger sister, Lou, is basically a ghost on her shoulder. And she's more defensive. She's there to deflect and counter and slow enemies down. Although she does have some offensive capabilities. So in the battles, you're constantly having to look out and button press for Loot's counterattack. On top of that, you need to figure out what enemies you're fighting and what weapon would be effective against them. You'll also need to figure out whether you need to raise a field in order to hit the enemy. Certain enemies can only be hit if you have a red field off, or if you have a blue field off. And you can only use the fields for a limited amount of time, otherwise Lou basically takes a nap for a couple of seconds. If you hit the enemy enough times or counter enemy enough times without getting hit yourself, you start to build up unity. And once your unity bar is filled up, you can then do synergy moves. These are stronger moves that you perform alongside Lou. Later in the game, if you build up enough unity, you can also use the rapture mode. 
where Briar transforms and goes crazy and turns purple, and she's really strong for a short amount of time. It kind of reminded me of Jack 2 on the PS2 if anyone's old enough to remember. So the combat is complicated, but it's fun. Easy to pick up but hard to master. And you can beat the game by just button bashing and having a lower difficulty, but you can also get incredibly good at stringing together combos and using different weapons. And that's where the scores come in. So at the end of every fight, the game scores you and tells you how good or bad you did, depending on the types of moves you used or how much damage you took or the time it took for you to wipe out the enemy. Anyway, outside of combat, this is where the problems really start to creep in and they're all more or less tied to pacing. So Solstice is too long of a game and there's nothing wrong with long games but what I'm trying to say politely is that the game does not have enough variety. It honestly needed to be like half the length and I should never have to say this when playing this type of game but there is simply too much fighting. There is too much fighting which is a crazy thing to say. Why else would you play it then stupid? Honestly this is how I feel because there just needed to be fewer battles per chapter or the fights needed to be shorter. So much of the game is just fighting and it starts to feel it starts to feel repetitive but this is not really a criticism of the combat more to do with the padding in between fights. That's where the criticism lies. So let me explain. Outside of battles the camera is fixed and it basically becomes a platform game. You jump around and hit glowing crystals and get to different parts of the map. Now with a camera that doesn't move the platforming in this game is not enjoyable. It's clunky, it's frustrating, it's really really hard to pull off. I even think the devs knew this because you could fall down a jump by accident and you'd find this basement area and there's a bunch of stuff there for you to collect. I mean that just seems like they're trying to bribe you for not complaining about the bad platforming. Anyway this stuff is not fun and it's just far too much of it. Then there's these crystal puzzle things if you can call them puzzles you just basically have to go and find and destroy these crystals to make a lift work or you know to open a door or something or they try to add some variety to it so you have to do them really quickly or explode a force wheel this was fun enough once maybe twice after that it becomes a chore and they keep building on it because there's nothing else to do they didn't need to add more depth to this adding more depth to these crappy activities does not make it better just shorten the game just shorten the game but that's all there basically is to do outside of combat. Those are the two main activities, blowing up crystals and jumping around and missing your platform. And so with nothing fun to do outside of combat, I can see why they wanted to fill this game with as much combat as possible. But the poor platforming and the busy work is pulling the combat down with it. What they needed to do was get rid of some of this. They could have kept some of the crystal puzzles in or they could have, you know, explained the story more. For example, when there's a character called Layton who makes appearance in most chapters, I always looked forward to seeing him because everything else was boring and all it was was a shop where you can get some interesting lore out of him as well. The game needed more of that. Or viewpoints, or more cutscenes, or anything. Anything more interesting. Not just busy work, busy work for the sake of it. And it's because of this busy work, and the fact there's nothing else to do in the game, that they ended up over relying on combat. And the combat becomes repetitive because of it. And again, that's not the combat's fault. That's poor pacing. Anyway, anyway, that's enough. Let's move on. Let's move on. I wanted to talk about the skill tree, which I thought was actually pretty good. You have to collect points separately for Briar and Loot. So for Briar, she's got these little red crystals and for Loot, it's the blue ones. And there's a fair chunk to choose from in the skill tree, especially for Loot. For Briar, it's a bit more boring where you're unlocking more or less the same moves, but for different weapons. And the weapons are introduced into the game at wildly different times. Again, the pacing should have been better here. And I often felt like I should have saved my points for later than spending them on existing weapons. It was really annoying. Anyway, the skill tree for Loot is actually pretty good. I didn't like the fact that to level up her skills you have to spend an inordinate amount of blue crystals but hey ho but she does have a lot of options so for example you can level up deflecting range enemies you can level up interrupting strong enemies you can slow time down you got the choice basically to do what you want with her for Briar, it's just a bit more limited. But sticking with Briar and the fact that I overinvested in certain weapons because the game didn't introduce me to the new ones soon enough I feel like they tried to basically long the game out in order to keep you playing or to give you an incentive to replay it more. And I can kind of see this in the codex as well. For certain codex entries, you need to beat an enemy a certain amount of times before it tells you what's effective against it. Why? This is so unfun. Either tell me or don't and force me to experiment. Why lock it away? If I have to fight an enemy five times before you tell me what's effective against it, I would have probably figured out what's effective already. I don't understand why you've locked it. It's such a bizarre approach to me. Just give me the tools and information I need to play the game. All of what I've just said seems to point to the fact that the devs, in my mind, wanted to make this game as long as possible. And I think this was a mistake. Solstice has good combat. And fine, milk the combat for what it's worth. Add challenges in the story, those are fun. You can add them outside of the story, you've got replayability with the chapters, fine. But they shouldn't have compromised on the main campaign because of it. Anyway, enough's enough. Let's move on from the gameplay and talk about the presentation. Solstice looks fantastic, simple as that. And starting with the environments, they looked great and it might have been a reason why they went for the static camera for the non-combat scenes. I do wish they had a bit more variety with the environments. You know, a snowy city that's on fire looks great, but 
it does get a bit boring the 50th time you've seen it. Combat looks great too. Every fight, even if it's a small one, looks epic. The screen does get very, very busy, particularly if you're counting a lot of stuff with the loot. And it can be overwhelming at times, but overall, it didn't feel too cluttered. All the enemies look great, and it's really easy to tell who's who, who you need to put the red field on for, who you need to put the blue one in for. And also, you can sort of figure out what type of weapon you need. Like, if someone's got armor, it's quite clear you would need to use the gauntlet. The camera for non-combat portions of the game was annoying, but that's primarily because it was platforming. It's not really to do with the camera. One small thing to add, there is some nudity in the game, which I thought was actually a bit out of place. And it's just something I thought I'd bring to your attention. In terms of actual performance, the game did crash on me twice, both within the first hour of playing. But other than that, I had no issues whatsoever. The game felt really smooth at 60 frames per second at 4K. There is DLSS for NVIDIA card users, and there is also AMD's FSR. I played the game on a 3090, so bear that in mind. I had an issue with the UI right at the beginning of the game. So I was playing with really large font sizes. It's just how I like to play games. And then I wanted to upgrade one of Briar's weapons. And I was looking at combos. And for the first combo in the game, I couldn't actually scroll down to see what button presses were required. I couldn't scroll down. I physically could not scroll down. I spent about 10, 15 minutes trying to scroll down. And the issue only resolved itself once I made the text smaller. Which is not a massive issue for me personally, because I can read small text. It's just I wanted it big. But this would be a massive issue for those people who are visually impaired. How are they going to play if they can't see any of the combos? Moving on to the audio, I thought both the music and the effects were top notch. Particularly when you use Rapture, so that's when she goes all purple and goes crazy. The music ramps up, it gets the juices flowing really. It felt so exciting, it really matched up with the intense combat there. All the voice acting was good too. Although I think the actress for Luke probably overacted a little bit, but not a massive issue. Overall, the game is really polished. Looks great, sounds great too. Alright, let's wrap this up. Solstice is a solid game. Combat is good, but overused. The story is good too, but underused. And the bits in between, that's what's letting the game down. This game should have been shorter. There just isn't enough variety to justify it being 15 to 20 hours long. It does look great and it does sound great. And if you can get it for free this week from Epic Games, definitely worth trying. It would be an actual saving in my book. Now there are CD keys out there. I saw some ranging from two pounds to five pounds. And at that price, I reckon it's definitely worth it. Full price is about £35, which I think is a bit of a push. But, you know, if you're not on PC and you are a fan of the genre, by all means, I think you should probably check it out. If you are on PC, I'd reckon get it for free this week on Epic or pick up a cheap CD key. But I don't want to take away from the fact that I actually really enjoyed my time with Solstice. And I think you would too. And that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.